everything is a blur. Echoing whispers of voices in my head, the blur of colors and a misty fog vision of my eyes. I try and blink away and focus, squinting in the light. My headache rushing through my skull, aches and pains numbing like prin pricks all over my body. And try as I might, those images and whispers just escape my grasp in knowing who am I and how did I get here? everybody uh welcome to our solo tabletop of this week for this wednesday our special day where we play solo tabletops uh if you don't know me by now i'm natalie or ghost candle on most places on the internet and today if you can't tell from all the wonderful branding i am playing i'm gonna butcher the naming of this let me hang on it has pronunciation the pdf i have here Ana, anamnesis, anamnesis, an anamnesis. Yes, <laughs> a word, um, which is our members of the past or a recollection of a neat knowledge from a previous existence. So, um, this was a game designed and written by Samantha Lee, or Lee, uh, other games, you can find them all on blinkingbirchgames.itch.io. I realized I did not set up my command code as I usually do for my Twitch people, so I apologize. Usually I'm much better, but I had a lot of tech issues, so it really scattered my brain whenever little things go wrong. It, it happens. I'll try and get that going here. Um, that way, when you do a command code, uh, we will have a link directly to this game. Now, um, this is a game that uses the tarot deck, and I've played uh, games of the past with it. And of two that um, I recall playing the first one for my so solo series, Yourself, as well as Tangled Blessings by Cassie Mothwind. Um, they were both kind of inspired by this game in particular, using the same sort of setup, and it was part of the game jam that uh, both uh, individuals have uploaded to for this particular game. And it's very much a game of self-reflection, self-discovery, um, where you've lost all memory of who you are or your character. Um, and you work through these different acts to discover uh, what you are all about. Um, so, yeah. Let me get this command code going. Um, and as I do that... Um, Gotta love doing things live. The YouTube's later is gonna love this. <laughs> uh, uh, there we go. Hopefully that works. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, solo journaling game, self discovery, reflection, identity. Uh, basically, we are playing as an individual who's just woken up uh, without any memories of who they are. I do have a fun little fillable character sheet that was provided with the game. Um, which has like appearance, personality, desires, fears, values, relationships. Um, and then it goes through the four acts, which are um, for each suit. So we'll be going, um, it goes pentacles, swords, cups, and wands here. And then this is the major arcana deck that we'll be pulling from for other aspects of the game, which I'll describe in a momento. Um, and yeah, in terms of any personal safeties, um, not a game designed to be like horror based or anything like that. Um, but of course, things can get heavy, uh, can get personal. Um, 
So if at any point, um, if you as an audience need to stop and step away, go ahead, pause. If you're watching this on YouTube, step away. If you're watching this on Twitch, it's fine. Take care of yourselves. Um, and if I do happen to draw a card and I just don't want to deal with it, um, I'll just draw a different card or, uh, to get a different prompt and then let's not ask questions about that. <laughs> okay. So, as I said, this is a tarot game. It says what we need is a tarot card, which I have lovely placed out here, and then a journal, but we're auto-recording, basically, so this is our journal. Um, so, to go on through how to play and the mechanics in the like, um, as I said, we shuffled uh, and organized everything out already. Um, we'll be drawing a card from the Major Arcana, which is going to be uh, a shadow, your shadow. Um, and it's supposed to represent who I was in the past. And we'll be keeping it face up next to me, something uh, as a guide and to constantly refer to as we go through this. Um, each act, we will draw three cards from the corresponding deck. Um, and there's two approaches. We can either flip one by one or flip all three together and play with the act as a whole. And um, with each card, there's a prompt. We make our entry uh, in also re remembering our shadow card. Um, and then we continue on from there. And then once we have read all three cards, uh, we draw from the major arcana. Um, and uh, for this prompt, uh, you draw represents a friend you spoke with and or the topic conversation. And then when that is concluded, the act is concluded, uh, we shuffle the major arcana back into the deck. So we'll, of course, play it all out and see how it goes. Um, it does say here how we interpret the cards is up to us, which I guess I should say what deck I'm using today. Um, this is an old deck from my high school days I've had for a very long time. I have the book here. Um, the Lularian Tarot Duck. Uh, Lularian is Welsh, um, but that's how you pronounce it. It's L L the E W E L L Y N Lularian, which is also the publishing house name. Uh, Lularian Publishing does a lot of tarot decks and the like. Uh, this one, Anna Marie Ferguson, is who designed these ones, and um kind of watercolor ink art which I'll show when we get to it you can kind of see it on the cover here this is the lovers on the cover um so very like watery watercolor um very pretty um this deck likes to mess with me in particular so we'll see how it goes it has its own personality when I'm playing with it <laughs> and yeah so with that uh there's not much on the spread for the how to play it's just a two page um, and I'm looking at the spreads PDF. It does have a couple examples of how to play. So if you get this game yourself um, and you're like, ah, Natalie did a poor job. Let me read. <laughs> Let me read what the examples are. Uh, there's a couple in there as well. Um, and yeah, so if we're ready, take a deep breath and wake up. So First, let me get my shadow here. I'm, I'm going to shuffle again because I like shuffling. And yeah, these aren't a standard size. As you can tell, tarot decks are usually a little longer. So let me shuffle. Okay, that's good. Ooh, that's an interesting one to have a shadow of. So this is the moon from my shadow. I think I just interpret it how I will. Um... So being the moon, the moon's kind of a shadowy thing in and of itself. And I will refer to my delightful companion book, um, which I guess I also didn't get to say this is a deck based on Arthurian and Celtic legends. So this is um, the moon, which the story associated to it is the Lake of Maidens. It has a moon, of course, the lake reflecting back and an owl. Oh. Jeez, I opened to the right page right off the bat. Okay. Um, so this is interesting. So my shadow is of someone very 
emotional, not in terms of like being all over the place, though that is very much a thing too, but is very intuitive with their emotions. Someone highly imaginative, creativity, um, sensitive to their own whims and dreams as well as others, um, but can put on a very much illusionary front. Sort of reflect back what uh, people bring to them. And can have very powerful swings in mood and emotion with that. So someone, there was a lot of mystery, whatever the shadow of myself was. And... And maybe because of how emotional they are and their need to try and overcome their fears and embrace their creativity um, and that sort of aspect of it may have led to whatever caused me to lose my memory. Taking one creative risk or maybe trying to overcome a fear that maybe just went a little too far. So, as I wake up, I am in an unfamiliar place. Um, the light is beaming, kind of god rays through misty, wispy clouds, fairy gray sky. It's hard with just a little bit of hint of blue. Um, sort of that early spring warmth. So, the sun already has that heat of summer, but there's still that kiss of winter on the breeze. And I'm lying on a mix of dirt and cobblestone just off to the side as I sort of get up. And nothing is triggering any recollection as I look at the simple home estates around built of dark kind of lumber and plaster and stone. Very rustic in its appearance, sort of European rustic. Um, but let's see. So I'm going to pull my three cards. I'm not going to flip them yet. Flip them. I'll do the one at a time. So first one is Seven of Pentacles. Play that there. There is a word on the tip of my tongue. And I keep trying to pull on it like like finding a loose thread and trying to see where it leads to and it just keeps unraveling and unraveling and unraveling and as i think trying to form it in my mouth and in my mind what this word is Abundance? Hmm. But what kind of word is abundance? An abundance of what? Of growth? Of reaping what we have worked so hard before? I don't know. But that's the word that seems to have been sitting on my mouth. On abundance. Put that down. Right. Page of Pentacles. As I 
contemplate that word and look about the town as I wander a little bit, walking, trying to ease out my body and feel it out. Someone's face comes so clearly in my mind. Abundance. I knew someone. He... I believe he was quite close to me. We worked closely together. Something tells me we worked closely together. And I remember just the freckles all over their squarish face. Kind of the moppy curling of dark hair on his head. The hazel eyes seem to always have a bit of a smile to them. And he always had just like that slight half-cocked grin. And I remember always feeling comfortable and happy. He was always someone that was able to... I guess as I remember, could draw me out from my seclusions and someone I was comfortable being my true self around and would come up with these creative endeavors for our work. Five of Pentacles. That to the side. So. And as I take a deep breath in and sigh it all out, I realize there's a smell on that crisp breeze. The smell of vanilla and clove and apple. And in my mind, it triggers a memory of baking, baking in a kitchen. And an old cast iron stove pulling out a, one of those deep dish trays of an apple crisp and tea sputtering and uh, whistling on the stovetop already ready to be poured out having stewed and brewed um, And it, it's a pleasant memory to come up. Just embracing that smell and bringing a, a warmth through to it. Was I maybe a baker? Maybe. So, as these memories percolate and come forth in my brain, uh, I 
Oh, missed this step. I was supposed to draw Major Arcana for each one. So let's do that now. <laughs> After read the prompt, draw the Major Arcana deck. You just answer the question with the prompt. So thinking back to that word abundance. The lovers. So maybe this word abundance isn't associated, it's associated to wealth or material, but something far more deeper and emotional. Connections to others, to friends, to family. Maybe an intimate partner. And then for this memory of this friend that I was comfortable with. Judgment. That's an interesting card. Let me refer to maybe a traditional meaning of it. My delightful deck here. And hey, 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 because judgment, I'm going to shut it out. If you're looking for your own solo games, which this game is actually included on their site, as well as playing cards and tarot cards, check out Knave of Cups. Um, I have a promo code there, Judgment, now that I drew the card, um, which will give you $5 off if you spend $25 or more. I'm going to say it whenever I draw Judgment uh, in these games. All right. So, for my friend in my recollection of my memory, um... <laughs> Very much someone who was always ready and uh, to pursue any new avenue or new creative path that we would come up together. Um, he would always bring sort of a new perception of life or, or new ideas to it. But it also always brought out the questions to consider whenever we started a new venture. And he knew how to self-evaluate and had, had the courage to bring about the change needed for our growth. And then for... This memory of baked goods in this kitchen, making apple crisp and tea. The priestess. Well, that's quite a woman right there. So. <laughs> Always one to be multitasking and getting that creative rush. So not only am I seeing in this memory I was making the apple crisp, I'm making tea. I have crafts on the tables with cinnamon sticks. I guess maybe the str those garland strings of cinnamon and dried orange slices and stuff. Maybe it might have been a holiday or a celebration but I have all these crafts across the tables and uh, various uh, dried flowers uh, just hanging that I see in my memories, just creating these flattened pieces of work and collage art almost with um, the different dried fruits and creating potpourris. Um, and just really being in that element of expressing and creating things for my enjoyment, like that aroma, just being a sense of comfort, of ease, and bringing a bit of life and visual creativity in the space. So in this opening act, I'm 
memories filling as I begin walking these streets. Put these aside so I may recollect them proper. And reshuffle our major arcana, other than our shadow, our shadow remains, back into the deck. So... So that headache still pounds at my temples. I begin to re start getting my bearings, feeling those pinpricks and needles of aches dissipate. They walk down the streets and look about the town. And from the scents, I do know this place. And something deep within me tells me that I actually know this place well, and yet I don't recall what this is. Well, let's draw and see. Oh, but there we go. Being very awkward about my drawing here. So. Age of Swords. Let me make sure I hold it up so y'all can see. So Page of Swords. So as I'm walking, I come across a little park area. There is a small pond and next to it a leaning willow tree with the silvery green leaves just sweeping barely kissing the touch like the surface of the pond creating faint little ripples with every sweep of its branches the grass very green around it there is a dirt path that loops around dissipating amongst brush and bushes and some other clusters of trees, a mix of birches and old oak. There is stone benches, uh, weathered but maintained, other than their edgings worn and chipped. Um, there is Sort of pillared lanterns of cast iron and hooks holding the lantern um, that someone can come by and light. And as I take it in and start walking the park path, I realize that I have been here before. This is a place that I visited quite a lot. And I come across one bench. It is familiar to me. I take a seat and I just get overcome with a repetitive motion of feeling like I need something to draw with in my one hand and a pad of paper in another. And this memory comes to me of sitting on this bench and drawing a mama duck and little ducklings in the pond that were just coming out of the reeds, um, playing underneath the branches of the willow and nibbling away at whatever is on the pond surface. And this was a place I would come to a lot to just sit and observe and sketch and contemplate and be myself in. This time I'm going to draw with the card. So, Temperance. Keep forgetting to bring it up to y'all. Temperance. Story associated with this one. Keeper of the Well. So let me refer to that 
Keeper of the Well. <laughs> so, having been here before, and what may have happened here that becomes such a strong memory in my brain is being asked uh, to purchase my sketches. And oftentimes people would sometimes even ask if I could sketch them, especially little kids. The children tend to always enjoy asking for a sketch of some random thing or wanting um, whatever I've uh, drawn. And well, I wasn't one to, <laughs> unless it ends up being a study for myself later, I was more than happy to give away or sell whatever it was I was drawing, um, especially if I was done with it. More than happy to earn that extra bit. And it felt good to have your my work wanted. Ten of Swords. So as I continue down the park path, I turn and I pass this cast iron gate that's just covered in vines um, and foliage all over. I'm sort of creating a barricade and turning this gate into an entryway to another world. And as I pass through and continue following the path, I realize that I've come into a graveyard. Old stone monuments standing tall, some statues, some just pillars with worn out names barely visible. Uh, some with uh, stoned urns, tombstones of various designs, some just the standard sort of arched top piece of stonework, some just stone on the ground, like a plaque, others like crosses. And as I walk on through, I find something. The star. It's very very hopeful card. Went too far. Went too far. Seventeen. Okay. There we go. Found it. So. So I find, I find one gravestone in particular. At first, it didn't seem like there was anything different to it compared to the others, but I was drawn to it and I brush back the old overgrowth and I see etched within the stonework, um, a sort of star sun pattern And underneath, in sort of the epitaph, a quote. That says, Where hope leads, inspiration follows. Where inspiration steps life takes place when life goes on death we will embrace
And I sort of sit amongst this gravestone, the name sort of buried from old age of dirt and plant growth as I'm trying to brush it off. I can't seem to find, but the quote sort of struck something in me. It's almost like I may have read this before. Like a, a line that guides my own path of life. Nine of Swords. While well, contemplating on that sort of quote, those words, I leave the graveyard and head back to the streets. And I catch a pair of people having an argument. And though I'm a little bit far away to know what they are arguing about, I see they're just expressive nature, the wide gestures, um, trying to emphasize what it is they are speaking about. And it makes me recall this moment early, early on with that friend. I remember being so emotional about trying something new, about about going to look for something um, like a legend or a myth and wanting to go out and find it to try and bring back something new in my life. And we argued about the possibilities about what could be true about myth of following this legendary path of exploration into the unknown. And though I don't recall the story, I do know we laughed about it quite a bit, turning that conversation into almost us creating up our own stories and myths and becoming a point of inspiration to draw from just in those exchange of words. And through all of that, that ended up being the start of a joint adventure the start of something new that we were ready to pursue and work on together. All right. Shuffle. Major Arcana back in. <laughs> so we go on to our next act. So I walk down the streets away from the argument, and with those memories, I realize I get a sense of something, and I come to a house that's just down a short sort of uh, entry path 
And something in me tells me that this house, this little place amongst all these other larger homes is mine. But it's unfamiliar to me. I don't really recognize the old weathered window panes and the overgrown pots and plants in the gardens. And as I walk up, I don't get a feeling of familiarity with the door arched made of deep red wood an old metal doorknob all very simple but I don't recall any of it there's just I just have a feeling that I'm supposed to know this place and it's supposed to be my home and I sort of pat around my pockets and I reach into one as I feel something in there and I pull out an old key and I try it on the door and I hear the click. Drawing cups now. So our first card, the two of cups. Take a sip of water here. Remember to hydrate. And as the squeaky creak of the door fills my ears, I peer inside and in that blinking adjustment from light to shadow, I take in the entryway. Pair of shoes off to the side, worn and muddied, as though been walking around in puddles or mud. Um, a old rug, looking like it may need a bit of a cleanup, maybe a sweep. As I sort of peer around and my eyes adjust, I get more and more of these little signs that someone else is here, stays here, or may have stayed here. There are framed sketches on the walls. What looks to be maybe a couple? And then I realize that I recognize the sketches. Those are my sketches. And the face of one of them looks like that friend of mine. Did we live together? I guess we may have. We've worked together. Eight of Cups. As I think about this friend and maybe what is the extent of our relationship, and I continue to move around the house, seeing if I can find other things to trigger more memories. I realized that there was actually something that had slipped underneath the door and the having opened it, I kind of brushed it off to the side and I go and look and it is a small letter sort of cream colored envelope and a red wax seal. And I reach over to it. Oh, the tower. Oh gods. 
Um, and as I reach over and look it over, hmm. I'm not 100% sure if this is for me. It has a name on it. I don't... doesn't trigger in my brain. But what it does do... It makes me recall with the emblem on the wax seal. I think I was working on a change in life that with all of our endeavors we kept sinking our money into and just nothing was catching and with all those efforts and struggles and feeling that we may lose it all we were on the verge of getting some good news. That all of our toils were about to be rewarded because someone was picking up our business. It was going to be an explosive change happening rapidly and just washing all that we have worked on it would get us to focus in on the one thing that was working and that we were happy to encompass in our life. Three of cups. And I come up at the kitchen and that recollection of that cinnamon and apples and I do catch that dried garland hanging in the window. I glance over and I see a waste bin and as I peer in, let's see, magician, magician. What would I see in the waste bin? There could be scraps of food. There could be letters and papers. Um, leftovers of arts and crafts. And maybe that's what I do catch. I look in and I see colored papers. I see old poopery that may have lost the stronger sense of it that's now sort of been thrown aside for new. Um, different uh, sort of materials of papers and dried flowers that were tossed aside either torn up and used up and these are just the remnants of what was left from the uh, crafting materials. I see bits of st string and threads and looking over the, to the tables I realize that, um, that these were used for maybe putting together book bindings as I catch on the table one book done and when I go over and flip through it um, it has the leather cover and opened up on the interiors this paper um, lined with dried flowers um, and sealed creating a beautiful collaged work of various bits of paper and 
petals and such on the inside. And maybe it wasn't necessarily, I may not have been a baker. Maybe we were book binders, made books and such for people to buy and use. Maybe it was a hobby. I could be one of many, many hobbies. It was definitely a home of a crafter, if anything, and an intense hobbyist. <laughs> Did I grab... There we go. <sighs> well, I take it in a much deep breath. I look over the space, I wander from room to room, taking it all in. And I've learned some things, but there's still memories that escape me. But I do know that there are some things exploring. First, a Fort of Wands. Is full, right? Yes, it is. Um, I catch over in the living room, there is a sort of... What is it called? Is it a Gramophone? A record player? Either way, some sort of device. It has a big horn on it. And a ta like a sort of squarish table. And there's a record, round record on it. And I set it up and turn the crank and get it to play. And through it, there's these just light, arid notes. A piano? I listened to it, I remember this being a favorite song of mine. And I get a feeling as though in this very living space, I would twirl and dance around to it in the most goofiest way, laughing, giggling. And as I turn in the space, listening to the music, remembering these moments of this dance. I try and mimic it out as I recall. And I just get this feeling of lightheartedness, of playfulness, of feeling out an expression that I could only do in the privacy of my home. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. The horned one. So in this deck, um, just to clarify, because all decks do some things differently, the horned one is would be the devil in other decks uh this one made it the horn one and treats a little differently so ah uh, so dancing around in this living space feeling pretty fine the horned one how do you help me horned one the impulse is just that impulse of energy and movement of it being just a natural thing that in this sort of sequestering of space and comfort and being secretive in a way from the public, I can fully express through movement, desire and emotion and 
be in total rhythm and losing myself to it. Okay. Eight of Wands. <laughs> but as I lose the sense of time, I blink and I am feeling beyond exhausted. So I go to this little brown couch. Not sure of the material, maybe a velveteen or something. It's very soft and plush, but old, like it may have been inherited or something. Or given. And as soon as I lay down, I am instantly put to sleep. Ooh, the death. That is an interesting. And as I sleep, dreams and imageries fill my mind. These vague visions of a past changing over of things that feel like I recognize faces and people and conversations, but they all turn into a change, an end and a beginning. And I have this dream about my friend, my partner, still unsure the exact connection, but it the stream becomes of them and he's just talking to me about this big move um, that we will need to go get this new place and have a home above our shop and it would make things a little easier. Um, and we could have all sorts of things. We could sell dried flower arrangements or live flower arrangements. We could sell the books uh, and baked goods, just a shop of shops. <laughs> it kept getting more and more and more ridiculous with every turn of sentence of saying, what we're going to be moving into. Dreams get weird. <laughs> Seven of Wands. <laughs> well, I wake up and I begin to stretch out my body and as I do I stretch out my leg and my foot accidentally hits the side table and upon it something topples over and crashes to the floor and I hear the shattering of it and when I turn and look I see that it was a statue um, a statue of clay roughly painted. It must have been someone's early attempt. Maybe it was my early attempt. And it, it was a statue of a cat, really long gated. Its tail was curled up and around. Um, the paint was chipping away on it all that I could see from the remnants. Um, of course, I didn't mean to break it, <laughs> but now it is shattered across the floor and with priestess drawn. Well, I 
But as it's on the floor, I kind of start picking up the pieces and I think about how to put this back together, the glue. And I just imagine this color, either gold or silver, this metalwork of like gold leaf, maybe all through in the glue and having these broken jagged stripes through the statue. How pretty would that be? And what if, what if I used other materials too? This is just clay dried out. I could maybe paper mache it. Create something really new, but still have that essence of what it was. <laughs> and in a way, that's almost like what I feel like I'm going through right now. There's this essence of what I was in the past. That creative, imaginative individual. But now there's going to be all these new layers of repair. The new streaks of broken stripes and colored papers bandaging up what was broken or changed. Uh, and now, our final act. So, as I contemplate <laughs> gathering up this broken cat statue. My past can shape my experiences and my thoughts, all my desires, but it doesn't make it a defining thing of me. I'm in full control of what other path that might be ahead. So the self, this individual that I was I always have a part of me, a foundation. It was only that early stonework to the road to come. So now what path can I choose? So this is where we can turn in our shadow, but we are open to choosing whatever card we wish from the Major Arcana to represent. How we feel we have changed and how, what do we identify now? I'm, here, let me do it this way so y'all can see. Um, I'm actually feeling this first card that was on the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to go with my instinct, the universe. So, which this card depicts sort of a wintry landscape up north of stone, and there's a lake settled in the middle of it. Which could, in a way, encompass what that shadow self was, the lake that was there. So who am I and what do I do next? Well, to express what the universe is, which I think in other decks is the world. Sort of the end of the major arcana journey. Okay. 
I'm now about someone who is moving forward. Is at peace with myself and my thoughts. Um, still has that inspiration and uh, creativity. But I'm now just completely unencumbered by the trials and anything trivial and wanting to just fully control my path and my fate. And just willing to move beyond my own limitations and embracing just what comes naturally in my life. And just always chasing that crowning achievement and that progression. Maybe, maybe I will follow that silly dream. Have a home above a little shop. A shop of whatever creative needs. Sounds nice. And that, my friends, is the end. Very quick little journaling game. Delightful. Um, all right, guys and fiends, that was Animesis. Animesis? Word? Animesis? <laughs> um, yeah, what a. I actually wasn't expecting it to be that quick, but that was nice. So, thoughts? Thoughts? This could be when I think about, um, because usually I come into this making up characters. I don't reference any of my existing characters from other games or anything. Um, but I do think this could be a fun little exploration of developing a character, especially a, um, if, uh, developing them in a home or town. And you just want to explore that in-depthness behind them. So a lot of times there will be moments of we have our characters and we have a concept maybe from whatever background we've picked for them, class or playbook, depending on the game you're playing. Um, but we don't have that full breadth of uh, home life or anything to draw from and it can be a little tricky to sometimes to come up with stuff on the fly um so i do think this could be a really good game to help develop those moments because in a way your character won't have these memories until you decide those are their memories um so this could be a fun way to work through that process and develop memories for this character and then help you continue developing the character. Um, so, yeah. Uh, fun game. We finished it in about an hour-ish uh, based on how I was playing it. So that's just a rough idea of maybe if you only have about an hour to play, um, you can break out those tarot cards and play around a little bit. Um, so once again, this is, uh, Anamensis. Let me see if my command code works. So I tried to type it in, in the beginning. Yeah, it does. That brought up the link for here on Twitch. I need more water and someone did bits for it. Thanks, Don. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, Again, this game was made uh, by Blinking Birch Games, um, which link is in chat, or if you're watching this later on YouTube, it will be in the description down below. Um, the tarot deck that I used for tonight's game, uh, the Luwarian, Luwin, uh, a 
card deck from Lil Wim Publishing, actually. And yeah, great. And of course, um, I said at the beginning too, was uh, this game inspired a couple of other games I paid and played in the past, uh, which treated it quite differently. There was Yourself, uh, which probably a little closer to uh, how this game we played here tonight, as it was also a self-exploration story. And then there was um, Tangled Blessings that I played a bit ago uh, for Cassie Mothwind. Um, and that was a very different one in terms of it's not an exploration of self as it is you are playing a student in a dark academy uh, sort of horror themed uh, setting. And that was quite a bit of fun. Not quite a bit. It was a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> Making up my dark boyfriend um, in Memphis. And uh, that ended up being a much longer game, too. So it kind of shows how you can really treat the sort of setup that NMSS uh, provides. And this is actually... Um, I wanted to play this for a while because I was thinking about developing my own uh, solo table tarp top game using tarot cards and I've used some t games with them uh, and now I played the game where those games got inspired from uh, so yeah card otherwise that's it for today a nice little quick session I do enjoy it when it's uh, actually quick um because then I don't lose my voice towards the end <laughs> uh also stuff's going on I, I got a lot of work on got a lot of, lot of things coming up that I'm trying to get done um I don't know why I'm shuffling these cards I just am I'm, I'm a shuffler and there's cards I have to shuffle and yeah oh um because I had judgment play as well and I said it at the time so I'll say it again if you're looking for your own set solo tabletop games like physical copies uh tarot decks um playing cards etc knave of cups i am a friend we have a promotion code um do i have a thing to bring it up i don't think i have a command code okay we do not have a command code so if you go to navacups.com and spend $25 or more. You can use the code JUDGMENT and you can get $5 off. So there you go. Do that. See if you like anything, you get $5 off. Very easy to do. <laughs> and yeah. Um, otherwise, I think that is about it. Our nice little wrap up here. Um, once again, if you like me uh and what i do and how i play and all that stuff remember if you're watching this on twitch uh drop the follow uh you can drop subscriptions i am an affiliate uh the bits all the stuffs uh if you're watching on youtube well make sure you like comment subscribe all that fun stuff that every youtuber has to say and you can find me um of course on the socials if you can't tell from what's on the screen below me here at Ghost Candle, Twitter, and Instagram, Ghost Candle on Ko-Fi, which is a great place if you want to tip me as well. Uh, send me that financial love so I can keep doing what I'm doing. And yeah, this stuff. So whatever uh, day, night, evening, whatever time zone it is for you, whatever you're doing, I hope it is a good one. And remember to hydrate. Very important. Look after yourselves, take your medications and vitamins and sleeps and all that stuff. And come back for something else on the channel or just Wednesdays for our solo tabletops. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. Uh, have a delightful good one and see you next time. Bye!